Uh, righty. Uh, Brando Chambly, the Golf Channel analyst, former PGA Tour golfer, and covering the U.S. Open for the Golf Channel. He joins us now. Let, let's start with the good here, Brando. Give me the good of the U.S. Open right now after one round. Well, you've got uh, at the top four players who are considered uh, the best players without a major championship. Uh, Dustin Johnson, I've said for years, is going nowhere but straight to the Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, you don't get to the Hall of Fame, generally speaking, unless you win a major championship. But I can't imagine how he ends his career without two, three, four, five of them. Uh, he's... Uh, He's as talented a player as I've ever seen. And then, of course, right there with him is a, is a ball-striking maestro in Henrik Stenson, Matt Kuchar, and Patrick Reed, who shot the lowest score here in the 2010 U.S. Amateur. And not far away, the two best stories, uh, the career Grand Slam is still alive. That was the best story coming into the week. The year Grand Slam, far-fetched as it may be, Jordan Spieth is, mm-hmm. uh, is still alive there. So you got those two good stories going. All right. Now give me the bad before we get to the ugly. The bad, I'd have to say, is the condition of the golf course. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, I think uh, the condition of these greens is uh, is pretty parallel with the condition of Tiger Woods' golf game. So uh, the fact is, uh, you know, we had to watch every single shot he hit yesterday. I, I get it. The whole world still is, is compelled to watch him do anything. But but it's sad that we have to, and I'm not, I'm not saying we have to. I, I mean, I love watching Tiger Woods play great golf. But if he were any other athlete in any other sport, he wouldn't be playing. He would have been benched by his coach, and you wouldn't have to see this sort of sad golf that he's he's putting on display. So uh, you know, it's it's I feel for him. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be on that stage playing golf that poorly on a golf course that that is this demanding. But Brando, let me go back to the golf course. Why would the U.S. Open? I, I love the scenery. I'm not playing it. Even watching it, it's hard to watch because you, you know, visually you're not able to pick up even where the ball is on the, uh, you know, the burnout fairways and even the greens right. themselves. But why would they have it at at a place that visually is not stimulating? And I know that the players can complain about how challenging, but just when people are watching it, it it uh, it just doesn't seem, you know, good TV. Well, they fell in love with an idea, the idea of bringing fescue over here and playing uh, true, you know, their idea of true links golf in the United States. But the problem is the greens are huge. So, so there's so much undulation on them. There's very limited areas where they can put the whole locations. And from what I understand about fescue, uh, it is intolerant of traffic. And it has been very warm leading up to this event. I was here two weeks ago walking around, and the greens were borderline unputtable then. So you, you have these, these areas that are basically, you know, they say yesterday they're asleep. I, I've, I've played many British Opens. I go to you know, Scotland all the time. The greens are pure there. And, and people were, you know, texting me, tweeting me last night saying, you're not an agronomist. Well, that's true, but I'm not an architect either. When I look at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I can tell you the darn <laughs> thing was erected improperly. Um, you know, they're, they're in descending order of grass they could have put here. You know, they could have put past Palum, all Poana, bent grass. I said last night Bermuda, and people were like, you've lost your mind. I was like, well, I've putted on dormant Bermuda, and it is a heck, a, lot, a heck of a lot better than what I'm seeing out there. It's the national championship. Yeah. Think of the Super Bowl, the World Series, Wimbledon, Augusta National. I mean, the best players in the world deserve a great putting surface where it doesn't influence the play uh, to the degree that it is going to the, for the rest of this week. All right, now the ugly. Tiger shot yeah. 80 because what? Well, I've said because he's, he's traded his genius for the ideas of others. He is surrounded by people constantly who are disrupting the, lots of different processes. I mean, when you're out practicing by yourself, there's a, an evaluation process. There's a problem-solving process. There's a creativity and imagination process. And then you cement all that. And then you believe in it. All of these teachers, not all of them, but a lot of these teachers that are surrounding him are, are, are telling him to do things based upon what they've defined from watching players who created anew. So we watched Jordan Spieth on TV just now. If you tuned in, you see him out there. Okay? So he puts cross-handed, left-hand low, with his shoulders even. But it would have been very easy for him to fall in love with Ben Crenshaw, a fellow Texan who went to the University of Texas, who puts with his left shoulder much higher than his right in a completely different method. What if his teacher would have said, no, 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 Ben's the best putter of all time. You putt this way. And he would have disrupted the creativity that led to the putting style that Jordan Spieth has. 
that's what's going on out there. Tiger Woods has a lot of people telling him, you're wrong, do it this way. Mm-hmm. If he were left alone, I think he'd figure it out. Would Butch Harmon put him on the straight and narrow? <laughs> yes, he would. He absolutely would. Uh, but is it that Tiger simple, call- though, Brandel, that if Butch Harmon came in and I gave him three months to work with Tiger, where he played no golf competitively, yeah. would he solve a lot of this? Yes, he would. You know, Butch would Butch would make it simple. He would he would figure out psychologically the best ways to talk to Tiger Woods. Butch is as much a psychologist as he is a swing teacher. Butch would tell him to lose weight. Butch would make him quit going to the gym. Butch would say, I'm not going to work with you. If you want to swing like you did in 2000, okay, that's fine. I get that. But does Tiger but know that, the... Randall? <laughs> yes, Yes, he does. There's no way he doesn't know that. He's looking out there. He's getting beat by a guy in Jimmy Walker who five years ago was 125th in the world or 200th in the world. Now Jimmy Walker is one of the biggest stars on the PGA Tour. What did he do? Well, he got exponentially better the minute he started working with Butch Harmon because what? You can't tell the difference in Jimmy Walker's golf swing from two years ago to now. There's not a dime's worth of difference that you can see. <laughs> he just made him believe that he was a better player. Yeah, he changed a few things here and there. And, uh, you know, I think he would have a tremendous influence. Now, Butch wouldn't take him back, and Tiger wouldn't call him. So, it, you know, we're, we're talking about a romanced idea of what would happen. Why wouldn't Butch but, take uh, him back? But it would be better. Why wouldn't Butch take him back? You know, I, I say that. If, if Tiger called, you know, Butch is a sweetheart. But, you know... I think that the way they, the way they separate it, um, you know, and, and what does Butch have to gain from it? You know, Butch to bring him back now, now Brandel, would be one of the great comeback. I mean, they're laughing at Tiger on the course yesterday. I mean, to bring Tiger back right. to win a major would be the best reconstruction era that we've had since the reconstruction era. <laughs> You're right about that, and it would be it would be made into a movie, and uh, and Butch would be lauded uh, from now to eternity as the greatest architect of golf swings ever. But the thing is, if you've ever been around Butch, you know you know he, he doesn't do that much because he does a little work. He knows what he's doing, and then he's out there to to uh, to inspire his players in other ways. I was standing behind him two days ago on the range. He was working with Dustin Johnson. I'm standing there, you know, I was talking to Dustin. I said, Dustin, you withdrew from Memphis. What's wrong? Because I wasn't feeling better. I wasn't feeling well. I feel fine now. I said, Butch, what's wrong with his golf swing? What's he doing? He goes, I was just coming up and out of it. I got a spine angle just going a little bit further forward. Now he's trapping it and he's in it perfect. And he shot 65 yesterday. <laughs> you know, little things like that. You ask some of the other teachers out there. Not, not all of them. I don't want to paint that brush with that brush because there are a lot of fine teachers out there. But you ask the ones that are, are most recognized out there. For, for supposedly affecting change. And they'll give you 10 minutes on what's wrong with the guy's golf swing. And I've been playing golf my entire life. I watch it, and I never stop. I never stop reading about it. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> Over, under 76 for Tiger today. Over. Wow. Does he? Oh, man. I, uh, I'd i like to say under, but... You know, he, did, if you were watching yesterday, I watched saw, all of it. Yeah, I had the featured group on Direct TV. I I watched every bit of it, and I I just I kept saying this is Tiger Woods question mark. Right. Well, you're you're as big a golf fan as I am. So Tiger Woods said in 2000 that all that great golf he played, the best shot he hit all year was the 14th hole, St Andrews final round, when Stevie Williams said, "Take it at that." church steeple in the background on the par five at St. Andrews. And as soon as Tiger hit it, he said, you mean that one? And I've got the swing on tape. It's, you know, it's unbelievable. It makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. And juxtapose that golf swing with the three wood they hit on the 18th hole yesterday. Oh my God. It's the same guy. It's one guy who's listening to the whole world tell him how to swing. And the other guy who has one guy, and you know, if you, if you work with one person, these guys are such great athletes. If you work with one person, they can make any method work, any method. You know, you look at Bubba Watson, who's never had a teacher. He came out with that on his own, but it's brilliant. But, okay, look at Zach Johnson. Strong grip, much flatter swing. He works with one guy. These guys are tremendous athletes. But when you work with everybody and you let everybody tell you how to swing, before long you, you don't know where home base is anymore. 
And it was just sad to see those two juxtapositions were in my mind when I saw him hit that. Have fun today. We'll be watching. And uh, thanks for joining us, Brando. Anytime, Dan. Nice talking to you as always. All right, buddy.